Okay, so these are the tools that I used to do this job in the video here. Um, 3 8 drive and a pipe to take the tension off the belt. Um, I used this 5 16 to fit on the screw extractor because the um, coolant temperature sensor is sheared off on me, so I had to take a screw extractor to get it out. Um, 3 8 universal. 10 millimeter small flathead, 18 millimeter crow's foot, 15 millimeter socket. I used a deep socket, couldn't find my regular socket. Uh, 8 millimeter wrench for the battery terminals, 15 millimeter wrench for some of the bolts, 3 8 drive ratchet, various extensions, 13 millimeter socket. Um, those are all the tools that you'll see in the video. Um, again, I'm not responsible for bodily injury, death, um, you know, damage to your vehicle or whatever, blah, 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 standard disclaimer, you know, you're uh, watching this video for educational purposes only, but uh, yeah, so here we go. What we have here is my daughter's 2004 Chevy Trailblazer with the Vortec 4200. Just a 4.2 liter, probably pretty similar on the uh, GMC Envoy throughout the various years in this body style. So we're going to be changing the coolant temperature sensor. It's causing a check engine light. The sensor itself is actually down behind the alternator. And it's really, really hard to see, but it's way back in there. Um, as we get further in, you'll see. So, um, first procedure you want to get to is to remove the battery just to clear up some space. We're going to have to be removing the alternator, but it's not that big of a project. But I figured I'd make a video out of it anyways just to help those who may need some additional instructions. Alright, so in removing the battery, I'm sure that your stock is probably 8mm, this particular battery. My daughter has a stereo, so this side here is a little bit larger, but it's already loosened up. Okay, once you get your terminals all disconnected from your battery, there is a 13mm hold down bolt that you got to get out. And here's another shot of the... Uh, that 13 millimeter that holds your battery down. Okay, so the first thing we want to do to get this alternator out is remove the serpentine belt. Now, down here to your left, you'll see the tensioner. There is a spot that accepts a 3 8 drive ratchet right in there, and you want to put pressure towards the passenger side of the vehicle. Um, I myself personally have a decent length copper pipe that I was able to slide over my ratchet to make turning the tensioner easier. You can see it release tension on the belt so that way you can go ahead and slide the belt off from the pulleys. A lot of people were saying they were having problems with this bottom alternator bolt. I just came in with a universal from underneath I didn't even have to jack the car up, didn't have to turn the wheel, wheel straight, okay, just came in here, behind the tire, straight shot over, with the, uh, I don't even know if I needed the universal, you probably could get away without it if you don't have one, just made it a little bit easier to get that, uh, to get that bottom bolt here, I'm gonna get that out, check back. Okay, so another way to attack that bottom bolt is if you have the universal and you don't want to go through your wheel well, it is possible just to get it with a universal. Here's the setup that I use to get that bottom bolt. Um, you don't have to have a deep socket. I just couldn't find my uh, my 15 millimeter short. Um, but it looks like about a 6 inch and 2 3 inches or if you had two 6 inch extensions and a universal, you'd be able to get this bottom bolt underneath the alternator through the wheel well. No problem. Alright, so next, I want to just get this bracket out of the way here. So there's three 15 millimeter bolts. There's one here, one here, and then there's one that you got to come in and get in there behind the bracket. Um, I was able to, to come in with 
an extension and just get on it. And then you got this 10 millimeter here and then the bracket should come off. And on my rig here, this clip was already broke off, so I'm not worried about it. But now this bracket should just be able to get right out of the way. And it exposes the two upper bolts a lot easier access for uh, the alternator. Just got out the two upper 15 millimeter bolts. And if you're like me, you probably dropped the bolt right there from the bracket that we took off and it fell behind the alternator. But once you get the alternator out, you can get that bolt, no problem. To actually remove the alternator from the engine bay, we have one clip here on the side of the alternator. And then underneath this boot here in the back, we have a 10 millimeter nut that needs to come off and then your alternator should come right out. All right, so now that we've got the alternator out of the way, we can literally see the coolant temperature sensor right there that we're gonna be taking off. Um, the connection for it is right here. It just unplugs and the two wires follow it down. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect it up here and then we're gonna get on this with a crow's foot, which I will show you in a second. Since the new one comes with your uh, holder here, then you don't have to worry about pulling this out. So just go feel free to, to, to pull this one right out. If this tab breaks off, don't worry about it. Mine came out. The trick to getting this plug undone is down inside this side right here. You wanna stick a screwdriver because it hooks on to that right there so I just stuck my screwdriver up inside up inside here and it came right out okay, so this is a crow's foot comes in a kit like this okay you could buy that I bought that one at O'Reilly's it's like six bucks but what it allows you to do is it allows you to go over the wires and then fit on it's kind of hard one-handed here it allows you to fit on to the actual sensor underneath down here. I'll get it set up and show you. I know this is kind of hard to see here because the lighting's bad, but that sits right on the sensor onto the uh, bolt head of the sensor. I'll go ahead and put my ratchet on here and then just rotate it out. So, as you can see, we had a little snag here. I'm trying to take this coolant temperature sensor out, it sheared off which really sucks because I had to run back down to the parts store, grab myself some Struix extractors. So we're gonna get these set up and uh, we'll see how they work. Okay, so this particular screw extractor fit and it would be a number four. So the number four screw extractor and on the end of the screw extractor, we have a 5 16th socket. I gave it a couple taps, so we tapped it in a little bit, got it all set up, and we're able to turn it out with the ratchet now, it seems to be coming out. I don't know why it sheared off in the first place. It's a soft metal that the sensor is made out of, but it's definitely coming out. It looks like we're going to lose some coolant, so I'm going to go get a bucket and put it underneath there. So, I have the new sensor in hand. I'm not going to be able to do this on video. You can see that it definitely, the screw extractor worked. Um, you know, it's definitely turning out the remains. So I'm just going to go ahead and screw this out, thread the other one in so I lose the minimal amount of coolant possible, and I'll check back in. Alright, so we only lost a little bit of coolant. I got this one started in. I'm going to go ahead and throw the crow's foot on it and get it tightened down. Alright, let's see if I can get a video of this crow's foot in action here. If I can, you literally just get it on there, and you can just turn it. Obviously, I'm just hand tightening it for now, but... That's the general idea behind the crow's foot, is to just get it on and just turn it in. And then obviously tighten it back up with the ratchet once it gets beyond hand tight, snug it up. 
All right, so we got her all in there and all snugged up. We'll go ahead and get the uh, electrical connection hooked back up here, pop back in there. The electrical connection is already made. Now we're just going to bolt the alternator back in. Don't forget to hook up your plug and your electrical connection to your alternator. The alternator is once again successfully mounted. The belt is back on and we're just going to put this bracket on. Okay, a really nice reassembly trick is that back bolt that when we loosened it up, it fell down behind the alternator, putting it back in, get your socket on it, put it in the bracket, and then put the bracket to the hole as you're putting the bracket on. Just put the uh, put the bolt in the hole so it don't fall. See, now I got the back bolt started, and I can put the bracket on and tighten it up, but definitely put that bolt with the bracket at the same time you're putting the bracket on. That way it's held by the bracket so it doesn't fall on you. Okay, so the bracket assembly is back on. Everything's back reassembled. Coolant temperature sensor's in. Alternator's in. I put a fresh belt on. Uh, your belt diagram's right there. If you want to put a fresh belt on, now would probably be a good time. Uh, all I got left to do is just put the battery in, and then uh, we can start her up. Okay, so the battery's all reconnected and tightened down, and uh, we're ready to see if she'll, she'll fire up here. All right, she started back up. I'll check for leaks, but I don't anticipate in there being any. So all in all, it wasn't a bad job. You know, just set aside a block of time and uh, take your time, some patience, and you should be able to accomplish it. If you like this video, feel free to give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to my channel. Thanks.